hey guys what's up everyone welcome or welcome back again to another video tutorial from the apex predator billiards club my name is apex senior and yes we are back on the practice table to talk about more kicking systems why complain when your opponent gets a lucky roll and plays a complete dead snooker like this on you and you have no option to make contact with an object ball that possibly is lying somewhere on the short rail or even if they play an excellent safety why complain why not just show your opponent that you're capable you have the skills and you have the knowledge to get out of kick shots like this So we're going to be talking about how to actually make that kind of kick shot. One, two, three reels, potentially pocketing the object ball, but for the most part, your objective should just be trying to make contact. Very awkward kick shot, doesn't come up a lot, but it's good to have it in your bag of tricks. So I'm going to be exposing that secret to you today. Before we do so, do not forget to smash that subscribe button below, turn on your post notification bell to be notified whenever I post more content like this. Consider dropping a like if the content is of any value to you and do not forget to share this out to your pool community's friends so we can add some more power and value to our kicking game and get out of more safeties. So without further ado, let's jump right into learning about this three wheel extension system for kicking all right guys so by the title you can obviously see that this is a extension of the plus two system check in the description box below for links to all my other kicking videos i did make a video i'm going to be leaving a link in the cards right here for you you can look in the cards and you can find a link to my plus two system where we talked about the diamond numberings for the short reel but now we're going to be using that system here to extend it so how we can actually get three rails and make contact with an object ball that is lying on the short rail. So let's get into it. Let's first talk about the diamond numberings. Of course, you would have already known by watching my previous video that the diamond numberings for the first diamond here is three, the middle diamond here is five, the third diamond here is seven. In between three and five is four, in between five and seven is six, and in between the pocket and the first diamond, which is three, is going to be two. And Basically, you can estimate or guesstimate all the other referencing that are going to be between these diamonds. Now, for the long rail here, the primary focus should be on this half of the table. Because most of the time, you're going to have to try to calculate what diamond do you need to contact here, here or here, so as to project the cue ball in towards this diamond here, diamond here and diamond here. So this diamond here is 50. This diamond here is 60, this diamond here is 70. And if you multiply each of these diamonds by two, then it will tell you the value of the diamonds down here. So if you multiply 50 by two, this diamond is 100. Multiply 60 by two, this diamond is 120. Multiply 70 by two, this diamond is 140. And that's the whole system, all right? So the next part of the system that you need to actually know is counting the diamond distance from where you're aiming from to where you need to contact on this rail here so as to make contact with the ball down here. So again, this diamond connects with this diamond, this connects with this, this connects with this. Okay, so I need to make a legal hit on the 15. And when it's this close to the pocket, you have a very good chance of actually pocketing the 15. The objective is not to pocket it, but if you get lucky, it would be a great shot, like what I showed you earlier. You can go three wheels and pocket 50. So here we go. The first thing I want to do is that I want to make contact with the 15. So I need to find out what diamond connects from here to there. And clearly this is the diamond that I need to go around two rails to make contact with. So I'm going to count the diamond distance from here to where I'm aiming from. So this is about one, probably about two. I'm thinking that this is about two. So I'm on the two, two track line. So aiming to two here should get me about here and then naturally gets me to the 15. So that's what I'm going to be doing. An adjustment to this though, guys, is that you need maximum side spin onto your cue ball. 
So what you want to do is that you want to make certain that you're not aiming to try to hit perhaps the front of the diamond, but you want to come in towards the diamond sharp. And you want to make certain that you have a lot of rotation onto the cue ball. So here we go. I'm going to be aiming, should aim at two. I like to tell you that you have to adjust a bit sharper into two. So aiming very close to the corner pocket here and spinning this cue ball around the angles. Here we go. And that was a nice hit. I was fortunate this time in making the 15, but on a good day, on your best day, you can actually get very fortunate and pocket that 15. It did take me a couple of tries to actually get the angle to bend in, but I wanted you to see the actual success. Let's have a look at example number two. All right, guys, so what I've done here is that I've actually moved my cue ball a bit up further onto the rail here. And so I'm trying to make contact with the 10. So again, I know that this is the diamond I need to make contact with. So we proceed to calculating the distance between the where I need to hit and where my cue ball is. So that's one, two, three, four. That's approximately, let's put it on the four, four track line. So that's about four, four here. And I know that naturally if I aim from four to four, I should head here and potentially making contact with the 10. Again, you want to adjust more inside of the track line because you need maximum rotation. The cue ball tends to go a little bit long. So you want to catch the rail early so as to compensate for the length at which it's going to be extending. So here we go. 4-4 four, four track line. Aim to about 3. And we should be able to make contact with the 10. And that was a really, really nice hit. Only took me two tries in that time to make contact with the 10 and you're able to get yourselves out of another top safety. Let's have a look at the final example here. So in this case here, I've actually brought my cue ball a bit closer to the rail, so it's a bit easier for aiming and I need to make contact with the nine. So here we go. This is the what connects with the nine. One, two, three, again about four. So I'm going to place my cue ball along the 4-4 track line here and I should be able to hit the chalk, hit the 9 or hit the area near to the chalk and hit the 9. Okay. Again, when it comes down to this area, you don't need as much side spin because by the time the cue ball catches the rail here, it will just head right into the 9. It will not be extending. So 4-4 track line, aim at about 3.5 here. And that was a nice hit onto the nine. So here we have it. Very awkward kicking, but it's a trick that you need to have in your arsenal whenever you're completely snookered and there's only one option. All right. So without further ado, we're going to bring this video to the end. Top system, get some time on the table. It's very, it, it's very, uh, it has a lot to do with spin. The spin has to be extremely right and on a good day you're going to make these kicks on a bad day you're going to miss them but like i said it's something that you ought to have in your bag of tricks all right so thank you so much for watching this content hope you enjoyed it i'm going to show you some clippings of my most successful attempts at the end of the video so you can see that it's possible to actually kick three wheels and make the object ball into the corner do take care until next time do not forget to smash that subscribe button below Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think. And of course, do not forget to like and share. Do take care. Peace.